Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here at reInvent. We're on location for AWS's reInvent annual conference, our 11th year at theCUBE. Uh, it's been great to watch the journey of Amazon go from, you know, not very well known 13 years ago, 11 years ago in theCUBE, and now it's, a, it's like an industry event. They got so much traffic, so much, so much going on, uh, and the game's changed. The next gen cloud is here, it's gen of AI, a big driver of a new experience, new expectations, role of data, uh, chip wars, price performance, whole new layer of activity to be analyzed. Of course, we've got a great analyst panel here in the old Cube Collective. I'm John Furrier, your host. We've got Shelly Kramer with the Cube Research. Welcome aboard, and Zia's Carvello with Carvello Research, part of our Cube friend group. Great to have you on, and also a contributor to Silicon Angle. Yeah. Great stories this week on Silicon Angle. Thanks for uh, getting that. What to expect? You nailed it. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, every, everyone always loves this event, and so it's good to put out a little yeah. preview piece. Well, let's get into it. The analyst perspective here. You guys were at the briefings on Wednesday. I got the exclusive with Adam. Pretty much laid out. He had to lay down a good keynote because they were getting hammered in the press on reputation. They don't have AI, they're late to the game. Microsoft made a power move with OpenAI. ChatGPT selling like crazy. Um, and, but the game was just, just a front end. There's a lot going on with the covers. So he had to lay down the as a killer keynote. It was almost like a call to arms. Well, they're not a marketing organization. If there's one thing they could do better is that. And I think yeah. if there's an area that they're behind in AI, it's marketing AI. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I do think their capabilities are, I mean, they've been using AI for, as long as they've been around, right? So exactly. to say they're behind an AI, I think is a little trite, but uh, you know, certainly their Redmond-based competitor there does a, in fact, the, the whole debacle with OpenAI, you know, there's, they say there's no such thing as bad press. That was, that, that raised the awareness of what Microsoft was doing better than anything else Microsoft could have done. Now you could say it's kind of negative press, positive press, but it, you know, it yeah. worked for them. And I, and I think, uh, and I think Adam did deliver a great keynote yeah. though. There was so much news in there and yeah. so much of it was yeah. focused on AI. But it was interesting though that with AI being the theme of the day, every day, across every event, it doesn't matter. It was really interesting to me that he didn't lead with AI in the keynote, it kind of came later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was interesting, I mean, I've observed Amazon, they're quirky with their culture, they love their, they love their keynotes, they get the bands, but they always start out on the same order of magnitude. Yeah. Customer slide, yeah. and then <laughs> they build up the drumbeat, but he decided to start with storage. I think what he wanted to do is get it out of the way, because Maybe. they had some upgrades on the storage, and we heard some from VMware today, yesterday I mean, the decoupling, the disaggregation of memory and storage is happening, starting to see kind of the non-core AI stuff changing significantly, which then rolls into this core advantage when he talked about the connective tissue with Nitro, and what was that MV, um, the connection between the GPUs? And oh, MV Link. MV Link, yeah, and that's, I mean, that's putting together some pretty good stuff around the chips. Yeah. I think, to me, that was the hidden gem. And I, I, think I actually like starting with storage because the theme is reinvention, and if you think of an industry where there's no room to reinvent, <laughs> storage would be one of them, but it does show if you, you know, if you're willing to continue to invest, you can find ways to innovate in things that, you know, I, I actually believe there's no real markets that are in IT that are commodities, as long as you continue to drive more R&D into it. And I, so for that reason, I actually thought it was a pretty clever way to drive the reinvent message. It's interesting you picked up on that, because yeah. now that you say that, he did kind of make a comment, like, oh, it's stor even storage. Yeah. <laughs> if we could, let's start, some that, the hardest thing to, yeah. to reinvent, let's start there. So it's really how yeah. he flips again. Yeah, that makes Amazon's sense. culture is, is, is and, I, and also he laid down like, we're not going to change because of the public opinion. We are who we are, we, this is what we do, we work back from the customer and we reinvent, which means that if they don't get it right, they just scrap it. I mean, I remember Andy Jassy said, all workloads are moving to the cloud and then they launch outposts. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Well, that's Andy, you said that's going to happen. Well, I, we listened to the well, customer. Remember in that, that Q&A with the analysts that you're, you had a lot of questions about why they launched outposts and his answer was, because customers wanted us to. Right, and that, that's the driving force here. Right. Um, you know, I was talking with uh, Pasquale Di Maio, the GM of Connect, right, the contact center product, and he was saying that too, that they, they don't, you know, while all the analyst accolades and things are nice, they really focus on what's right for the customer, and then they'll let the market play out the way it does. 
Well, let's analyze, the, let's analyze what's going on at reInvent. Uh, let's get into it more. Obviously, you mentioned the layers of the stack. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. The middleware there, you got the three layers, infrastructure, LLM layer, you call foundation models layer, and then yep. the app layer, which essentially, for them, it's a version of, I think, a shim layer, connective tissue to enable apps. I mean, you see Q, which was a phenomenal demo. I thought that was a killer yeah, demo. It's really exciting. I thought Matt Wood did a great demo on his piece. Fast, tight. Uh, what's your guys' analysis of what they're doing here? Yeah, I, I really like the play they have with Bedrock uh, because it does give customers choice, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is, it's going to be to see, interesting to see how the, the market plays out, but generally, if you give customers choice, that's better for them and you wind up the winner. I, I've talked to a couple customers here, actually, that had started using OpenAI and they moved to Bedrock because they didn't want to be locked into one model. And the one thing that I can tell you is we have no idea what's coming. <laughs> and so the ability to go pick and choose the model you right. want for the specific use case is actually better for the customer. That kind of flexibility, I think, um, you know, is going to serve them well long term. Well, and as are the guardrails for Bedrock that yes. they announced, and I think that's a huge deal, and we talked about this earlier, sort of the role, the importance of security and having security baked in foundationally, and yeah. I think that's what we see, you know, safe user experiences, that's what everybody yeah. wants and needs, and so I think that was a really and you pointed out, Shelly, when we were on our earlier interview that the race to the top yeah. vibe was very strong. I yeah. love, I mean, no one wants to race to the bottom, but right. that, you can say chips are going there, but not really, yeah. they're being differentiated. So it's a whole other ball game. And I think another interesting point I want to get your guys' thoughts on, I don't know if you caught this, but they kind of pulled a Microsoft on Microsoft. Um, project, uh, um, the, the big announcement was the Q. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Project Q is the big thing in OpenAI that's around the corner that everyone's been talking about. Right. So I wonder if they wanted to get the name out there. Well, to kind of like, is it the same project? Would it, I mean, well, I mean, no, Q's been used with QuickSight now for a while. And uh, I was just talking to QuickSight, and they said Quick Q grew up, yeah. right? So instead of it being used for a tool just for database analysis, now it's being used for everything across Amazon. And yep. so, in this case, Q was named after the James Bond Q, right? Who's yeah, the assistant yeah, yeah. and, and the uh, gadgets. And <laughs> but but it is. Um, I, I do think having a single. Um, uh, you know, uh, generative AI client there that works across all your products. Yes. You know, very the, consistent. All the layers of the yeah, stack. And makes yeah. them, and, and it furthers, we talked about this last yeah. year, right? One of the things Amazon's doing better now is they're having better integration across all their building blocks, and I think Q's a good example of that. Right, well and I think too, when cost is such an issue and really maximizing not only effectiveness but minimizing cost as you can, I think this is an important yeah. thing with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out where what's real in the demos, because there was some stuff there that I was squinting through, I'm like, okay, that business thing looked too good. I mean, three steps and you're in. I mean, where do you think, how real do you think that is, Zias, in your opinion? I think it's very real. I think that's the power of, uh, uh, of natural language, yeah. right? There was a, a lot of things that you just couldn't have done a couple years ago. Uh, but now, with just a couple of steps, if you want to, you know, you know, query a, you know, your sales tool and ask it what my most profitable region is, a line of business person can do that instead of having to have, you know, an analytics person in the middle, right? That's and so amazing. The, it's the from a generative AI perspective, it's the rise in natural language and its ability to bring content together that actually takes something that was a whole bunch of steps and makes it three steps. So Dave and I were debating on our keynote analysis this morning, how much he left on the table, and how much meat on the bone he left for Swami tomorrow. So Swami's keynote's tomorrow, so I'm thinking the zero ETL is kind of a telegraph to what might become behind the scenes because to make all that work, you got to have a data management strategy. Yeah. Yep. So what's that look like if in the new era of generative AI? Yeah, well the zero ETL uh, uh, vision actually is you leave your data where it is, right? And, <laughs> but, then, but then you got to create the middleware, if you want to call it that, to manage it, right? And so Cleanroom does that, right, with uh, multiple uh, companies, but they do need something, I think, to tie all those different data. Because that's the one thing that I think plagues companies today. When I was, I was talking to one of the big hotel chains about it, and they were saying that we have, you know, data for this, data for this, data for this, and so they're trying to normalize it, aggregate it. Yeah. They put it all up in the cloud, and I said, does that scare you? He goes, yeah, it scares the crap out of me because well, now sure. I've got a single point of failure, right? Yeah. So, but I think if companies are going to actually try and use data as their competitive advantage, they got to find a way to bring those data sets together because that is, to me, that's the killer of what companies are dealing with right now is their data. Yeah. yeah. User experience. You're starting to see that shift with, with this generative interfaces, streaming answers. Um, the demos I thought with the code whisper Everything were phenomenal. Everything ease of use, yeah. Everything simple, ease of use, 
you know, really kind of democratizing. I kind of hate to use that word because I feel like it's really overused a lot. No, it's the right um, word though. But I feel, but I feel like, like I was really excited about um, Amazon Connect, Amazon Q Connect, and really, you know, the opportunities that exist for Amazon in Contact Center, which I know, you know, you and I both talk about a lot. I mean, there is so much opportunity here for Amazon to yeah. really win in this space um, for a variety of reasons. And yeah. you know, one is its ubiquity. Right? How many companies are running on AWS? And so, with a solution like this, and then with the queue baked into that, and making all of this AI powered, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, I think I think we're going to see some stuff tomorrow. I hope to see more custom models like healthcare, some yeah. of these industry specifics. They kind of tease some industry stats out. Yeah. Um, I thought the Pfizer component was great. Yeah. They're shown yeah. there. And then, to me, what jumped out at me at the end there was when they did the demo um, of JavaScript, thousand applications over two days. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm like, okay, that's a game changer. Changer, yeah. Number one, and then he, they weaved in .NET to Linux. Yes. Okay, that's going to be a huge reduction in licensing fees. Right. If you're an enterprise, that is like a silver. That is a silver bullet. <laughs> it's yeah. So exciting. That, I mean, that yeah. with the impact of the cost side, you got that kind of code migration efficiency, productivity. The chips now with energy, just energy saves. You want to stack a bunch of GPUs with Nvidia. You have two choices: put it together on your own, or go in with the new MV Link cluster. I mean, the cost savings on that alone and performance. Yeah. So we yeah. get the performance game going on here. Speeds and feeds are back. One of the interesting things about Amazon and the, the Connect product, a good example of this, is there's a lot of people out there that think Connect is a builder-led product. And when you say Amazon to people, everything is builder-led. But they've been doing more and more work to actually, obviously there's always going to be a builder-led component, sure. right? But more, uh, you know, with more and more of their products, a line of business can use it, and I think Connect's a great example of that, where you can use a turnkey out of the box. A business they, intelligence at your fingertips, yeah, right they, there. They've got a low code, no code, so your yeah. software power user can use it, and I, I think that the, the addressable market of who can use Amazon is growing from just developer, right, to, to your average software power user, now to line of business, and that actually puts them in a much different position competitively, right now, you, know, you can see them competing with like the big application vendors that tend to have a lot more CEO focus than right. uh, you know than an infrastructure provider would. Right. You guys have been in the industry for a, a, a many waves. You've seen the major inflection points. What's different here? Because we're talking about next gen, as the legit next level here. We're talking about what is going to happen next? What do you think is going to happen? Obviously nascent, I compared to the web, you had online service providers like AOL, they were proprietary, the World Wide Web was standards. There's all kinds of ways things to discuss, open versus closed. Is it similar? You know, maybe not, but there's a big debate. I saw the Hugging Face founder on Twitter saying, here's what's going on in open. It's not just open source, it's open models, right? The right. power law, uh, Stileski basically validated our power law of specialty models. Okay, I agree with that. I think choice, multiple models integrating together, that middle layer, what happens next? What do you guys see? Because we're still embryonic yeah. well, in this whole shift. <clears throat> well, open, over time, any, any market you've been in, when it goes open, it, that's when the hockey stick adoption curve, hat, right? So I think open is the right approach. I do think <laughs> your ability to be kind of a combination of open and turnkey, uh, mm -hmm. and, and NVIDIA is a great example of that, right? Everything they build, they put a reference architecture together, um, and that's why ARM was so important to them. Uh, and but that in reference architecture, then they take to their OEMs and say you can build it as well, and so the customers get the benefit of a turnkey solution in an open model. So they still have choice, but they get the performance benefits of turnkey, yeah. and that's not we've never really seen that in IT before, right? The the best of both worlds are. Yeah. And yeah. what about uh, developer enablement? Obviously, this is some code whisperer. You mentioned call center. Yeah. Not a lot of app conversations. So I think Celeste's going to lean wow. in towards letting the yeah. ecosystem do its thing. Yeah. What do you guys see developing at the top of the stack? I don't, I don't, well, I, I, I like what they've been doing. Answer. In, I like yeah. what they've been doing in apps because yeah. for a lot of their apps, like you remember, they launched supply chain last year. They're just their apps they use internally. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and then customers go, oh, Wait, I kinda we like, like that. Yeah, I kind of like the way you do that, <laughs> and they flip it around, and it's 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 already it's fully a service. Based. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they sell it as a service, and because it's consumption based, their barrier to entry is really low. Yeah. Right, and then you just start to build it from there. And, and I, I think there's, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what the roadmap is here because they could get into logistics, they could get into yeah. uh, you know, HR, or they, I mean, they, they build a lot of their own applications. And I think this is an area 
I, uh, I was disappointed we didn't see any in, in Adams. That was one of the points I brought up in my uh, reInvent preview. I think more and more we start seeing AWS roll out SaaS apps uh, that are targeted at that line of business yeah. person, as well as continuing down the path of developer. Developer role is going to change though, and this is something I'm curious to see how well their developers yeah. glom onto that, because if indeed you can do a thousand Java app, my, you know, my migration to that in two days, uh, that would have been, um, you, th you think of the team of people that would have been working on that for years before. Right. Yeah. So that role, that whole role is going to change. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a whole nother ball. You game. can't fight it though, right? Yeah, it's no, good for the No, it doesn't yeah. make sense to fight it. And I, and I think too, you know, one of the things that Siliski said is, you know, really their focus is all about reinventing the future of work. That's a big bucket. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. everything across the whole tech stack, all the infrastructure, so much of this, and, yeah. I, and I think that that kind of telegraphed a little bit of what's ahead. And I think um, that's right on the money because that's the key app is the user experience. Yeah. And Amazon's DNA is remove all the heavy lifting to get get into business. And yeah. here, to your point, it's not just techies doing a startup and it's a choice between data center or put my credit card down and build next Dropbox yeah. or Airbnb. Yeah. Now it's like, wow, I could actually revolutionize my department or company yeah. with the creative idea, test it out, um, but, it's, but it's more scale. I mean, the scale's a, a huge advantage here. I think wow. we're really close to living in a world where in natural language you say, I need an app to do this, this, and this. Here's and, your options. And it goes yeah. and builds it for you. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I, I remember the 3D printer time, the first time I saw a 3D printer, I literally fell out of my chair and said, this is incredible. I think that's the kind of moment we're kind of seeing now where it just happens. Yeah. yeah. Deploy me a web app yeah. that does some, or, you know. Yeah. Well, and again, built on a foundation of security and respect for privacy and data privacy and all of that, and I think that is what yeah. Certainly, CISOs are looking yeah. for, but that's really such an important consideration that I think that having that be your foundational well, strategy. I think we're going to have a lot of conversations around the data yeah. strategy, around to unpack what this is all going to mean, latency, the physics, the yeah. brave new world. It's the battle for AI supremacy. Thanks for the coming on and unpacking this with the analyst angle. <laughs> we're back with more coverage here in Las Vegas. Back to the studio. Thanks for watching. Stay with us.